Today, boys and girls, we're going to learn about plants that never, ever bloom. Hey, my name is Christy Hager and I teach at Independence Elementary. I teach kindergarten and one of my favorite authors is Ruth Heller. So today I'm going to read a book called Plants That Never Ever Bloom. Ruth Heller is the author and illustrator of all of her books. She has beautiful artwork. Here's the title page. So let's begin. A mushroom doesn't ever bloom. It grows on trees and leaves and things. Or in the grass in fairy rings. Some grow to be as tall as all of these you see. And some look rather strange to me. These glow at night. We don't know why. Mushrooms are all called fungi. Seaweed doesn't ever bloom. Some is green and often seen close to the shore. But there is more. Deeper down where it is several shades of brown. In the Pacific and Atlantic, seaweed grows to be gigantic. This mass has broken free and floats in the Sargasso Sea, where grumpy looking fish reside and other creatures like to hide. This is the grumpy looking fish, and he camouflages in that seaweed. <clears throat> Whichever color it may be, seaweed is called algae. Deepest on the ocean bed is seaweed that is pink and red. Lichen never ever blooms. It lives on logs and trees and rocks and sometimes grows on little stalks. Lush moss that clings on trees. I bet you've seen moss at your house, boys and girls. And liverworts like these that grow beside a stream are green, but not a flower can be seen. Ferns. Your mom and dad might have a fern at home. From fiddleheads unfurl. Their cousins are the horsetails and this creeping evergreen. And not on any one of these are flowers ever seen. 200 million years ago, ferns were rather small. Their cousins, on the other hand, grew very, very tall. None of these have flowers and so they have no seeds. They have no seeds, as I have said, they grow from tiny spores instead. Ruth Heller, Heller likes to introduce new vocabulary and spores is a great new word to learn. That's how fungi and these plants are reproduced. But here are some exceptions. There always are a few. Like all the rest, they never bloom, but from a seed they grew. One is called the ginkgo. Another is the U. And every plant that bears a cone is an exception too. In proper scientific terms, all of these are gymnosperms. That's another new vocabulary word that Ruth Heller wants us to learn, a gymnosperm. The end. This book reminds me of a book a friend of mine wrote. She loves science and 
I have asked her to join me today to talk about what inspired her to write the book, What Are Fungi? Please help me welcome Mrs. Massey. Thank you. So my name is Kim Massey and I wrote the book, What Are Fungi? I'm also the author of the sequel to What Are Fungi? Uh, the sequel is What Good is a Mushroom? This is a fictional book about the interactions of living things. And I'm also the author of Sowing Seeds with Brother Wally, a biographical nonfiction book for children. So I've been asked if I would read for you What Are Fungi? I wrote this book a few years ago when fungi were added to the kindergarten standards for science and the kindergarten teachers needed a resource. So I asked my uncle to take some pictures and this was the first picture he sent me and I thought this would make a great cover for a book. So I'll read a little bit for you. The book starts off with a little poem and I admit I am not a poet but sometimes I can get a few lines to rhyme. Teacher, what are fungi? I've heard they're all around me. Are they a type of plant? Are they a type of ant? Are they green? Are they mean? No, they're not plants and they certainly aren't ants, but you might find them in the grass or on other things you might pass. Mushrooms are a common type of fungi. If you find one in the grass, leave it be. Some fungi are poisonous, others are helpful to us. Fungi are not plants or animals, you see. These living things have their own special category. Oh, so mushrooms are fungi? Is that all there is to know? Well, yeast are fungi and so are molds. When counting all the species, there are a million times five. And like plants and animals, they too are alive. Fungi are not plants. Fungi do not have roots, stems, or leaves. Fungi do not make their own food from sunlight. Some fungi, however, do grow up from the soil. Fungi are not animals. Fungi do not have arms, legs, or wings. They cannot move on their own. As you will learn, however, some fungi have gills. Keep reading to find out what fungi are and why they are important. Have you ever seen a mushroom? A mushroom is a type of fungus. The word fungus is used when there is only one. The word fungi is used when there are many. The study of fungi is called mycology. And as it was pointed out, the vocabulary terms are underlined. So on this page, we have fungus, we have fungi, which can also be pronounced fungi, and we have mycology. Mushrooms often grow after it rains and they grow up fast. The mushroom is only a small part of the larger fungus that is growing underground. When a mushroom springs up, it means the fungus is ready to reproduce. Mushrooms hold the fungal spores. When the wind blows, the fungal spores are carried away from the gills of the mushroom to a new place to grow. The spores of a fungus <clears throat> are like the seeds of a plant. When the spores land, they will grow into a new fungus. Can you find the gills of this mushroom? When we look at this picture and then we compare to this picture, you should be able to find the gills. Mushrooms bought in the grocery store can be a tasty addition to many foods. Mushrooms found growing in your yard should never be eaten because they may be poisonous. Can you count the mushrooms in this salad? Can you find the mushrooms on this pizza? For many years, 
Fungi were thought to be plants. Fungi, such as mushrooms, can often be found growing from the soil along with plants. Plants are green because they make their own food. Fungi do not make their own food and they are not green. Fungi are often considered to be decomposers because they break down living things when they die. The job of a fungus is very important. Without fungi, our world would be filled with dead plants and animals. Fungi help dead things to decay or rot. Look at the fungi growing on these dead trees. Boys and girls, something I did not point out, all of the pictures in this book were taken in South Carolina. Some were taken in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and some were taken in Belton, South Carolina. But these are all somewhat local pictures. I believe this was taken at Cherry Park. Right here. Another place you may find fungi is in your home. Have you ever seen a fuzzy slice of bread? This type of fungus is called mold. Mold grows on food and many other things after they become old. Amazingly, a fungus is used to make bread too. The type of fungus needed to make bread is called yeast. When bread is made, flour, sugar, water, and yeast are mixed. The yeasts eat the sugar, which makes the bread rise. Baking the bread kills the yeast and leaves delicious bread. One more place fungi can be found is on the human body. Yes, fungi can grow on human skin. An example is when people have itchy feet due to the fungus that causes athlete's foot. Keeping your feet and shoes and socks both clean and dry can prevent athlete's foot. And here is the summary. You have learned that fungi are not green and they do not make their own food. Mushrooms, molds, and yeast are all different types of fungi. Many fungi are decomposers. They help dead things decay. Without fungi, there would be dead plants and animals everywhere. Without fungi, we would not have delicious bread. And the last page, these are some fungi that you should look for on your next nature walk. Thank you for listening. I've just read for you, What Are Fungi? Thank you, Miss Massey, for sharing your book, uh, What Are Fungi, with us. Boys and girls, don't forget to look for some fungi the next time you go on a nature walk. But don't eat it. And I hope you enjoyed learning about plants that never, ever bloom today with us.